it takes power to produce results in this kingdom results in this kingdom are manifested through power without the power of god it is impossible to see the glory of god revealed the bible is full of scriptures that attest to the fact that possibilities in this realm are at the instance of the power of god that is at work in a life and at work through a life exodus chapter 14 please let's run through a few scriptures very quickly from verse 30 and 31 exodus 14 30 31 victory over pharaoh and his cohorts the contest at the red sea the bible says thus the lord saved israel that day out of the hand of the egyptians and israel saw the egyptians dead upon the seashore 31 Guess what the Bible says? And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. It says, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. The fear of the Lord and their capacity to believe God was at the instance of the display of power. That the God who can cause Pharaoh, the horses, even and their rider to be thrown into the sea to make the red sea part and then to cover it again he must be god and the bible says they feared him and they also feared moses in ephesians chapter 3 paul was mentoring the church in ephesus verse 20 and 21 and here's what he had to say he says now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think he says according to the power someone say according to the power one more time please according to the power that worketh in us not according to the power that is available in god according to the power that works in us all power belongs to the Lord. He says, I have spoken once and twice have you heard that all power belongs to God. But it is the measure of that power that works in you that will command the possibilities that you see in your life according to the power that works in us. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that means as far as the matters of life and godliness is concerned you cannot do away with the power of god and expect a manifestation nor a performance in your life please pay attention many people ignore the power of god and they expect spiritual realities to find expression mm -mm. it takes power to build a great ministry it takes a power to build a great destiny it takes power to be able to raise ordinary children to become giants it takes power to remain it takes power to not die it takes power to be strengthened it takes power to be wealthy it takes power to be wise it takes power to ward off the arsenals of darkness a generation that ignores the power of god is a generation that will never represent the purposes of God. The issue of power has nothing to do with Pentecostalism or charismatism. It is the modus operandi of the kingdom that as far as manifesting spiritual realities is concerned, it will take more than desire. Someone shout power. Let the devil hear it. Power. Luke chapter 1 please from verse 26. Follow this story closely. Luke 1, 26. The Bible says, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth. All right? To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Next verse, please. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women next verse the bible says and when she saw him she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be 
verse 30 now and the angel said unto her fear not mary for thou hast found favor with god so he was bringing glad tidings and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name jesus why 32 he shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest and the lord shall give unto him the throne of his father david reading to 35 it says and he shall reign over the house of jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end now mary said i have heard of the mighty things you have said would happen through me but how shall this be seeing that i know not a man in other words the process of marriage has started but it's not been culminated with joseph so it can be consummated so how am i going to get pregnant if you had been patient for me to get married and now you say you will have a child it will make sense because now i will subscribe to things that happen naturally the law of reproduction but now you are meeting me a virgin who is a spouse and you are telling me this mighty thing will happen through me and in your discussion you did not even mention joseph in the story so how shall these things be seeing i know not a man 35 and the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon you but it will not stop there and the power of the highest shall overshadow you the power of the highest shall overshadow you it says therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee as a result of power shall be called the son of god the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Jesus was born through the ministry of power. It took more than the speakings of God for him to arrive. He said the power of the highest shall overshadow you. In fact, Jesus himself was not only born of the power of God. The Bible tells us Paul was mentoring the church in Rome. That should be... Um, Romans chapter 1 I believe from verse 3 and 4 he began to teach them and he said the son of God he said concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh remember where we just read and said he the Bible says he was declared to be the son of God help me please with power it took power for Jesus to stop the suspicion whether or not he was the son of God he was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. That means without power, we would have been doubting till today if he was truly the son of God. It took power to clear the argument that he truly was the son of God. Ephesians chapter 1 I love this one from verse 15 listen closely Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 15 wherefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints uh-huh he says I cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him pay attention now it says verse 18 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints read verse 19 with me please ready one to read and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe just stop there what is the exceeding greatness of his power to we who believe not just to everybody Paul is saying I pray that God will open your eyes to understand certain things to grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him among the many things I want you to know the hope of your calling but then to also know the exceeding greatness 
of the power of God that is at work in us who believe. The same power, verse 20, that was exerted when he rose up from the dead. That means the power that is at work in you is the same power that took Jesus from Hades and literally brought him out. Ah. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. That rescue the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Listen, believe me, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a song. If this enters you as a revelation, something will happen to your life. You know, I was watching a video some days ago, and I was watching A. A. Allen. It's a, it was a very old video, and I watched this man. They brought a man on a wheelchair, deaf. No, no, he was not deaf, but he was dumb. He could not speak. And he was grounded on the wheelchair. And A. A. Allen was just preaching and was sharing the secrets to the power of God in his own life. And all the things that God gave him. And when he was done talking, the people were watching. I don't know why those days they didn't clap and cheer up like we are. And I wonder how those guys preached. You would say something powerful and yet everybody would be looking like you are lying. And he turned right to that gentleman and the wife was standing there and he said how long has he been in this situation could not talk could not walk and he held him casually ah! your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me he laid his hands and in an instant not gradually in an instant that man's tongue was unloosed or unlocked and he, he lifted him and began to ask him questions and he told him to stand up someone sat on the wheelchair and the man started pushing the wheelchair i said oh god help us help us what did we lose what did we miss in this generation same power that conquered the grave lives in you lives in you same power that conquered the grave lives in me hear me ladies and gentlemen our generation is at the mercy of the manifestation of the power of God from the saints to redeem this evil and depraved generation this is not a generation of blind loyalty again the generation of, of our parents would believe even if they don't understand but this generation is a generation of questions if you say he lifts prove it if you say he changes lives prove it we are not going to just believe and say yes sir for nothing ministry without the power of God is only an invitation into a life of frustration believe me when I tell you business without the power of God parenting without the power of God we live in a time where you will see a child five years old and then he begins to confess I killed my father I killed my uncle I killed my mother and you are wondering five years The darkness that is upon the earth today will require more than good speaking, good discussion. It will take a display of power, genuine power as of old. And it has nothing to do with being in ministry as you know. Power. Please hear me. I wrote here the believers efficiency as a child of God 
and as a witness is power dependent write it down please the believers efficiency as a child of God and as a witness is power dependent no matter how prepared you are to be a witness you can learn doctrine wonderful you can learn character wonderful but if the power component is not captured in your preparation believe me it will look like God did not send you I hope you know that Moses already began to learn the wisdom of Egypt according to Paul's teaching before he left to encounter the God of the Bible yet when he was returning God said no no I will not send you just like that take this rod is a rod wherewith you will wrote signs and wonders let me submit to you sincerely our generation needs a revival of genuine power our understanding of power for the average believer in this generation is falling down and standing up and while we do not downplay anything that is sponsored by the spirit there is a level of power we need to go back to study history how far did God use this man how far did God anoint them men who shook cities by such a display of power you know let me tell you the truth today we pride in having revelation you listen to those people sometimes they had a simple childlike message repent Jesus is Lord then they say now sit down and watch I'm done talking I have told you to repent you are justified to not understand it but let me show you what he can do when the blind see when the deaf hear when the dead are raised back to life when lives change that one is a manifestation of the power of God and this is one of the things that we are missing you would go to a crusade that is full of tens of thousands of people and preach and preach and make an altar call and only five people will come out is that a crusade you sang you acted drama there were all kinds of motivations you even shared water and shared all kinds of drinks to motivate the people and then you preach and out of tens of thousands of people go and read Acts chapter 2 the Bible says when the Holy Ghost fell 3,000 people in a moment 3,000 people one moment no clashing of cymbal no bass guitar no keyboard programming any atmosphere but when power came and power fell Peter said this is that this is that which was spoken by prophet Joel there's frustration in ministry today because the power component has not been incorporated there is frustration today in the presence of darkness because genuine power we have not paid the price and for those who have tasted a bit of it we have camped around that peripheral level whereas there are deeper levels of power Yes, sir. The days of his power. If Jesus himself had to be declared as the Son of God with power, it means every believer in Christ, listen very carefully, every believer in Christ, it is your responsibility to work in partnership with the keys I'll be sharing with you to make your calling and your election sure please let me speak to you respectfully if you're a man or a woman of God here people have a right to suspect you and think you are a burden to God's program until you validate your call among the many evidences by the display of the power of God to change to heal to deliver to set free by the time you come into a family ladies and gentlemen and within three days their lives change doors open the yokes of witchcraft broken because you came Elisha said oh king don't be afraid let no man come and let him know that there is a prophet in Israel holy holy Blessed is he who 
comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. I remember many years ago, just when we were at the infancy, just even preparing to start this walk. I remember one of the spectacular miracles that God did. I had seen bits and pieces of the grace of God, but that would be an event where God healed someone. He was on phone. I prayed for that gentleman. I don't know where he is. Probably he's somewhere around the world, even listening today. He had a, a medical condition where his spine, the spine was broken. They listed, you know how they, they name all those things. And it was broken and they were waiting for some people from India at the teaching hospital in Zaria. And I prayed for this gentleman. I remember he was even wearing a neck, um, what do you call it? A collar. And I prayed, honestly, looking from this standpoint, I don't know if I believed a miracle would happen or not. But I remember praying. And that gentleman removed everything and ran to his mother's room. It was when night call just started. And the only thing I know is that the mother shouted, Jesus. And that was it. Let me tell you, the next day in that family, you know how people come for burial. People came to verify, is this thing true? I myself, it was when I saw the gentleman who came with the x-ray. I remember when that thing happened let me tell you over the next maybe one month I got calls from medical personnel I got calls from several people I have this disease that means people have been hurting but until they find where genuine power can work they would rather just keep quiet with their pain Kapraske Pakatusha Pekata. Oh, restore power, restore power, restore power to the body, restore power more than the speakings of men, more than the philosophies of men, more than falling down and standing up, more than just speaking philosophies. Restore authentic apostolic power to your body. Let me tell you the truth it is not difficult to take a nation believe me when i tell you it is not difficult to take a territory territories were supposed to be taken to the degree to which they see the excellency of god's power we have replaced power with good speaking and there is a place for it but let me tell you if we believe we are going to save this generation just by the gist thing we are saying we will be disappointed i can tell you why will I not go to a herbalist when I try every option and every pastor prays for me and nothing happens and yet I am dying? Don't tell people don't go to a herbalist, don't go back to the village, don't go to, you don't know the desperation of people's pain. When you understand what people can do in the presence of pain, you will cry for power rather than condemn people until you give an alternative that is superior, an alternative that is provable. Forget about this cheese that you say, don't go to the devil. Hallelujah. That little incident would be the beginning of mighty things that God would do through my life, but it was a lesson. I remember the frustration that I felt as a young man of God just starting out. That I would, I remember one time I went to pray for someone and I spoke to that man, I laid my hands upon him. He was on a wheelchair. The wife absolutely believed in me. She beat you, you, you couldn't have said that they, it was unbelief. The woman believed in me with all her heart that if I stepped into their house, that man would stand up from the wheelchair. But I prayed for him sincerely. Let me tell you the truth by the privilege of God's grace. I don't claim to know so much, but I've read this Bible a bit. Believe me when I tell you, I quoted scriptures 
I taught her doctrine. Then it was now time for performance. And I stood right there and said, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, Lord, by your mercy, this and that and that, absolutely nothing happened. You see, not many people will be honest to tell you this. Everybody will just talk all kinds of nonsense. I left that day and I said, God, this is not good. It's not good for me. It's not good for my mindset. It's not even good for my health. And it's not good for the people you are sending me to. Can I tell you, a time will come where people get used to you being powerless. It's a dangerous state as a man of God. When people conclude you, people have groups in their minds. They know those who are serious. They know those who are sincere but powerless. And they know those who are joking. When they really have problems, they know who to meet. In one day, nations can be saved if they can truly see the power of God, even by the Spirit of God. The Bible says Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power. Please sit down. Thank God for the testimonies that we see and we celebrate. Thank God for the little that God does in and through our lives. But believers, let me submit to you. Look at me, please. How many of you will celebrate dew just falling during rainy season? As powerful as dew is, is it enough to cause your crops to grow? It takes, it takes rain. It says, ask for rain in the time of the latter rain. We are celebrating trickles in the body of Christ. One headache here, one miracle happening there. That is the reason why they suspect all of us and think that we are all whatever it is. Because there is a level of consistency that mastery must bring. That people can come and know for a shorty that in addition to hearing the counsel of God, they are going to see God in their lives overnight. Let me tell you the truth. It is not difficult to win souls. I tell you this, except and unless they see the display of the power and the glory of God. Men are not that stubborn. They just have not been transported to a realm higher than science. The replacement for power is philosophy and the explanations of men. And the excuse that men don't have faith. someone learning the believers efficiency as a child of God and as a witness of his resurrection is power dependent John 1 12 let's look at a few scriptures my God I pray that someone as you are listening to me tonight you will truly have an encounter with the power of God John 1 12 but as many as received him the Bible says to them he gave what did he give them mm. so they've already received him the Bible says in addition he gave them power power to become power to become the breadwinner power to become the, the lifter who lifts others Power to veto the yokes and the curses. Power to declare longevity over your family. Power to lift people out of shame. Power to answer the question, where is your God? It says to them gave he power to become sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 7 please. He said, whereof Paul now, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. I was made a minister. It took more than oil and earthly ordination to make me a minister. It took more than the laying on of hands of the presbytery. He says that grace was given to me and that came by the effectual working of his power
In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. The Bible talks about the possibility of having a form of godliness. Is that in your Bible? But denying the power thereof. Please look up. You can have the form of godliness. Oh yes, he heals. Oh yes, he lifts. Amen. I know. Oh yes, I, I prophesy. And all these things we do. The Bible says, but denying the power. He said, turn away from such. Not just from such people. Turn away from such mindsets that makes you to embrace the form of godliness and then there is no power component to back it. So your being a witness in this kingdom is power dependent. Can I tell you sincerely, especially for those of us who are laborers in the vineyard, this work is going to become a burdensome, a, a, a pattern, a repetitive cycle of burdensome pain that will evolve to jealousy and anger without the genuine manifestation of the power of God. I submit to you without sounding proud. Members are not going to leave their house and come and sit down quietly just to hear stories. They can listen online. Whatever makes them to get up and come and sit down, you better be sure that they will come and receive what will change their lives. It is going to take more than just listening. Some of you, while you are seated right now, your loved ones are in the hospital. Some of you, while you are seated right now, you can't even wait for miracle service because the urgency that is there, it may not, if they, it is a matter of life and death. Unfortunately, respectfully but unfortunately, we have reduced the power of God to material prosperity in the body of Christ. So whether you have zero anointing or whatever, once you are rich, it is generally, it is safe to conclude that you have power. While it is true that there is a dimension of the power of God that brings kingdom wealth, can I tell you the truth? It will take more than money to move the purposes of God. You don't drop money on someone on a wheelchair and his thumbs up. No. If that were so, we'll stop preaching and all of us will go to look for money and just drop it on sick bodies. It takes more than a bottle of water. It takes more than a handkerchief, an apron, anointing oil. Power to change lives. That someone leaves his home. That mama can guarantee that as I am bringing my son for koinonia, she doesn't need to tell him you will change. She can only pray that he will come with her. And the young man just sits down. And while praise and worship is happening, and the word is happening, the one stubborn child who vowed that he will not change, an altar call is made, and he's the first to run from outside. That is power. Power that translates a person from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. That is genuine power, ladies and gentlemen. someone who is the only one who has risen among 11 people in the family and he comes just for one encounter and within one week doors open and all six get jobs first then the remaining are, they just rise into superior dimensions The Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection. With great power, not great speaking, not great stories, and with great power gave the apostles.
apostles witness of the resurrection and he says and great grace was upon them all great power great power great power he gave witness of the resurrection with great power it takes great power some of us while we are seated here our loved ones have not been interested in the things of God for a long time because sincerely there is nothing about your faith experience that has become a sermon. They have looked at your life and there is no demonstration of the reality of the power of God. Tonight's meeting is to provoke you. The Bible says he gave us power. He gave us more than a message, ladies and gentlemen. There is a message to this thing, but there is the power of God. By the time someone comes with a genotype issue, blood condition, and you know, listen, I'm not talking about miracles that you are not sure, miracles that are doctored here and there, genuine miracles when the power of God touches a man, every scientific thing can confirm it, even if it cannot explain it. Hear me. It is not difficult for your father to be saved. The day the power of God is displayed in that family, go and read your Bible and see how people were converted in a moment. Did you not read about the jailer? The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang. Is that true? And that everybody within the prison heard them. Suddenly there was a sound. It came and there was an earthquake and all doors opened. The jailer thinking they had gone. He took a knife and was about to kill himself. Say no, don't hurt yourself. We are all here. And that began the beginning of the salvation of his whole family. We lie today about testimonies because there is no genuine power to produce authentic miracles. We talk about people who are healed that we can never see. People who are doing all kinds of exaggerated miracles. Why can't it happen in the midst of God's people? Oh, my help has come. Oh, tell you the truth in my opinion there is nothing more demeaning to the message of the gospel and the power of God than telling people stories of what God did before and then there are people with that same situation right there and then at the end of it you share the grace and go what was the purpose of the story it's like I claim to be selling water and I tell you listen I gave people water bags of water bottles of water and someone says I am thirsty even if it's half a bottle I will be grateful and we say don't worry it's all right I know that yesterday I am telling you go and ask them yesterday nobody is arguing but you claim to have an endless supply of that water why will you not quench the thirst today thank God for the one who lifted yesterday but we need to see the one who lived now. Thank God for the one who healed yesterday. But we need to see the one who heals now. Thank God for the one who saved yesterday. But for God's sake, we need to see the one who saves now. Someone shout now. now. One more time, say now. now. Thank God for the one who can change lives before. But we want to see the one who can change lives now. He said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Thank God for what he did, but now I'm in a place where I need to see your power. Hallelujah. Without power, 
a time will come when this generation will stand openly and reject Jesus generationally I'm not talking about individuals people will stand up you know the way there are movements movements a movement will stand up and say our goal is to officially announce that as a generation we have chosen take Jesus out of our lives ah but not when we are alive <laughs> and I will not be silent I Restore power. Restore healing power. Restore power that sets men free. Oh, before Jesus returns, there will be a restoration. I am telling you. The fathers prophesied it. Smith Wigglesworth said it. A. A. Allen said it. These great men said it. There has to be a restoration of authentic, genuine spiritual power at a level and a frequency of mastery that can be a backing to the gospel. It was said that during the time of John G. Lake, Spokane was one of the cities with some of the healthiest people and manifestation of miracles because he had what we call healing rooms like dormitories and they would literally bring people there. He was accused of practicing medicine without license. Do you know the kind of audacity you would take? To bring a sick body and keep that person there and you gave the person 30 days within 30 days regardless what was wrong we talk about the God that turned the son backwards for Hezekiah we talk about the one who kept the son still for Joshua you know we talk about that person as if he's a different God as if he went on a long vacation then they gave us another inferior one please hear me we want to see the nation saved in one day it will take more than good speaking some of them do not even understand English It will take more than that. Thank God for welfare. Thank God for charity. Pipe born water, rice, sewing machine. Thank God for it. But if somebody is sick, he does not need a sewing machine. If there are demons that sit upon people's lives, please don't get me wrong. I don't downplay those things. Those things only give added value. When Jesus showed up, he didn't give physical gifts. He announced the kingdom with such a demonstration of power he healed the sick they brought him people in the night when it was evening he healed them casted all the demons ask and now give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart distant shores and the islands will see your life as it rises, your life. a demonstration of the power of God to a degree and a frequency that dumbfounds principalities and powers can I tell you the truth I know that many people downplay the place of the supernatural and the miraculous 
and then all these controversial miracles that are not spectacular enough Oh, headache was healed and someone is arguing with it and saying how are you sure it was a panadol you took in the morning or the prayer of the man of God because there is a realm of the miraculous called notable miracles miracles that consultants will say listen I have practiced medicine for 35 years I have not seen it in this fashion that a woman with no tubes whatsoever carrying triplets where did the baby stay That one there is a machine that can check it a man who comes to church on a wheelchair carries his wheelchair by himself back home remember that man has neighbors and they said I said this morning you were crippled and he said I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of God how many billboards can announce like that how many posters can announce like that that Jesus is alive please hear me the darkness that is in this world today I am saying it again it will require more than just nice preaching more than having just a sincere heart i'm saying this because i believe there are many people here you are part of this mighty army my precious people hear me if god told the apostles to tarry you need to know why he gave them power he said you guys he spent three and a half years who teaches doctrine more than jesus who mentors a people more than the rabbi himself and he said i am confident of all i have given you but i submit to you is not enough tarry why will you still tarry every day was a lecture with jesus you know what it means to sit down in his presence full of the holy ghost receiving lectures for three and a half years i thought that would be enough for ministry he said tarry until you'll be endued with power we will keep giving flimsy explanations for the absence of power like it does not matter or it's not all about power of course it's not all about power but the role that power has to play nothing will replace it nothing will replace it do you know the confidence to do evangelism has died in many of you because there is no power to prove you don't know what you will go and tell the people that is the truth mama let's go to church and they'll say don't mind those those men of God who are fraudsters who will only come and collect money from you don't blame them until they see the display of God's power that someone walks in and while it is a I mean someone is coming on a crutch and the service has not even started and as soon as they come in look at the woman with the issue of blood the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment and said to herself if I may but touch if I may but touch the person talking to you has seen the grace of God to the glory of God but believe me it is it is child's play compared to where we are crying that God will help us get to because you see I don't know now I'm not saying you should I was I was looking for a particular video and then I stumbled across some kind of program or something like that that you know was on YouTube and it was a two minute video and I decided to watch it it was magicians magicians were doing something you know they were doing all kinds of things I don't know what they were doing but I kept looking with anger in my spirit not anger towards them anger towards our condition I said what in the world is this these people through whether through divination or astral practices have been able to access routes in the spirit and I say here we are shouting God is almighty shouting God is all-powerful do you know how many people who are following koinonia right now from various hospitals imagine you are a sick patient and you are listening to a man of God right now talking maybe you are listening on air what else will you be looking for 
what better platform for evangelism where you have unbelievers surrounding you is that not the greatest if you were God would that not be the greatest opportunity to get that person healed this thing is not working in our lives let's just be honest and submit with humility and start searching for the pathway that leads to authentic power rather than standing in pride and talking about our falling here and there that is not producing any potent result when I speak I speak with love and honor to the body but I submit to you we are joking we need to obtain grace from God. It's an uncomfortable truth. If we call one person who is blind now to come and stand here, one person who is on a wheelchair now to come and stand here, one person whose life and family is under yokes and curses, come and stand here, one person who has gone through all kinds of bodily deformities, come and stand here, another person come and stand here and we give you a bible as a man of god we say all right you claim that jesus is lord what else is a greater expression of darkness than this demonstrate the superiority of the life of god i like elijah prophets of baal let's meet at camel this thing we have to settle once and for all all these debates about the sovereignty of god no let's go to mount camel if God be God, serve him. If Baal be God, serve him. In one day, a nation was brought to his knees by one man, not one church, not one nation. One day, one day, and he said, let's start with you. Call upon your God from morning till night. Oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, bell, hear us. And nothing happened. When it was the time of the evening sacrifice, he said, get out of the way now. Don't waste my time. That is mastery. That is not, you don't guess with that kind of risk. Listen, Elijah was teaching us, we all claim we're in the New Testament. And we say these guys are in the Old Testament. But see what they did in the Old Testament. We who are now fruits of the New Testament, let us demonstrate the superiority of what we stand on. The Bible says it was founded upon better promises. And please do not say the bodies of men do not matter. Because Jesus died in the flesh. The same grace that saves is the same grace that heals. The same grace that delivers. When he blesses, he blesses holistically. Spirit, soul and body. Tonight's teaching is a wake up call. It's a wake up call. And we called upon the God of heaven. The Bible says fire came and licked the entire thing, burnt everything and they killed the prophets of Baal. How about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? How long did it take Babylon to submit to the Lordship of Jehovah? One day, one spectacular encounter. A day will come, we'll step our feet across nations and they reject the gospel and we'll tell them you rejected light and darkness will suddenly appear, physical darkness, as proof that they have rejected the gospel. That is a sermon greater than any oratory. And people will run and say, come, show us the way of the Lord. If it is true that Jesus is coming soon, I submit to you the rate at which we are winning the world the November statistics of the world says we are 8 billion people and counting. Christianity practicing faith, including backsliders, including unserious people, all together professing Christians were about 2.6 billion. Out of how many? Over 2,000 years, this is what we have achieved. The Bible called a few people, these are they that turned the world upside down. There needs to be a spectacular manifestation of the hand of God. Go and read about the Azusa Street Revival. Go and read about the Wealth Revival. Go and read about men like John Knox. Go and read about men like E.M. Bounds, Charles G. Feeney. Go and read about these great men. Believe 
with me it was when you see these things written in history they are not empty talks they were written for our learning man of God something is wrong with your spiritual life if this message is not challenging you a few of us that it looks like God has helped a bit we are the ones that people have to make do it relative to what can be what is there There was a video I watched years ago about a river somewhere. Please sit down. A river somewhere in the east that suddenly appeared also. I, I don't know if it's verified, but I mean it's, it's one time and it was purported that it had some healing power and it was recorded and people were jumping and diving into it. Even while they were recording them, they were not ashamed because it seemed to carry a semblance. There were thousands of people. It looked like a market square. A river that cannot speak a river that cannot preach a river that did not have a keyboardist a river that does not give honorarium or take honorarium it only there was a a, a, a a statement that it could heal and people came from everywhere let me tell you the truth Jesus would have been surprised if the only thing he brought is a salmon repent for the kingdom is at hand is that what your bible says he did no he started he announced himself with a spectacular demonstration of the miraculous then he now calmed the people down and said come to the mountain and then he now started teaching them they didn't exactly believe but could they argue he said even if you do not believe me believe me for the work's sake and then the ultimate of that power was when he died went to Hades collected the keys and on the third day he rose again nothing could bring him down and he resurrected by the power of the spirit and said all hail all authority in heaven and in earth has been given unto me he says go go have we truly been obedient let me tell you the truth evangelism is not something you just encourage people to do evangelism is a product of conviction when people see the authentic manifestation of power how many of you right now if we announce that in koinonia we are giving 50 50 000 tomorrow no announcement on social media that's the condition don't announce anything on social media but we are giving 50 50 000 for instance tomorrow you will see strategies of publicity you have never known the human brain can invent that is because they, there is an assurance that 50,000 is on ground. A family of 10 can say, let's quickly come because that's 500 naira, that's rent. People would travel by 2 a.m. and come and wait patiently. Sun, too small a reason. Rain, too small a reason for 50,000. So when you tell people that Jesus is here, he saves, he heals, he delivers. They will first drag themselves and say, let's, let's watch and see what happens. At the end of it, you share the grace. They say, I knew it. I knew that is this nonsense that will waste my time again. The next time you invite them, they will say, pray for us. It's already a message. It's a, it's a, it's a shorthand form of a long writing that says you are wasting my time and I'm not prepared to go and waste my time in that place again. I pray that God will do something to me, to you, to Koinonia, and to the body of Christ to restore genuine and authentic power. The world is not prepared for our excuses. The Bible says, I reckon, Romans chapter 8, I reckon that the sufferings of this time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. It says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God creation was subject to the bondage of corruption not willingly but by reason of adam the one who subjected him that they are waiting to come into the glorious liberty of the sons this is the power of god let the blind see let the deaf hear let the crippled be healed let people with all kinds of demonic situations 
imagine a family comes and you tell them in the name of Jesus the gates of this family is open and right as you are prophesying somebody calls at home and says I don't know but someone just came and gave us two million he said God sent him where are you right now you say I'm in church what is the man of God saying he's just declaring he said you better stay there no amount of billboard poster internet advert will replace the demonstration of the authentic power of Jesus Christ authentic power of Jesus Christ the prophet said by this time tomorrow tomorrow it happened little children have you any catch no cast your net to the right side end of discussion they caught so much fish Do you know I look at so many believers and I see the way I hate seeing people suffering it is not just because it is my call every time I see this I immediately take responsibility remember my vision that I shared with you of years ago no food no water who is the cause that was a whole generation speaking sometimes I'm not an emotional person ordinarily honestly I've seen all kinds of things and sometimes I even ask myself whether I'm all right. Is it that you don't cry? Can't you? I'm, I'm, it doesn't mean I'm not touched, but I can just stand like a stone there. But let me tell you sincerely, you want to see tears from my eyes? Let me see oppression and God's people being reduced to become like Noah animals, spiritually, financially, and, in, and otherwise. That one has triggered compassion. I can cry and weep like a baby. Do you know what it means to see a family of five people, six people on their way to church? No money, no food, but they love Jesus. And you say they don't have faith? What is your definition of faith? I want to prophesy and they kneel down with their hands open, expecting to receive. And at the end of it, we share the grace. One year becomes two years, becomes five years, and absolutely nothing happened what of family members who say apostle I hear you know people send me text messages and sometimes they say apostle I've heard the mighty things that God is doing with you if you can only speak the word I know my mother or my brother and sometimes I, I take that body and I say Lord these people believe in me and they believe in you help me to stop disappointing you let there be a higher level of power and a higher level of grace The day you meet your father they've been laughing at you and say you are a, I hear that you are going to be a man of God say my friend go and look for a job wait go and buy federal government form and look for a job ministry that is full of failures and you look at your father and say daddy you have been on this bed for five years I come in the name of the Lord I am your son but I come by the authority of the one who has sent me stand up and your father stands up and begins to walk around the compound what happened Jesus healed what happened Jesus delivered what happened Jesus saved. it's a different thing to say ah God healed somebody somewhere and the person says I am healed people will easily be able to doubt this is a generation that wants to see the power of God not just here you can doubt what you hear, but you cannot doubt what you see. Is God speaking to someone tonight? In one minute before I continue, I want you to lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, I am available. Trust me with higher levels of your power. Trust me with higher levels of your grace. Someone is praying. You are crying to the God of heaven higher levels of your power higher levels of your grace there needs to be results 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 in my life results in my christian experience results demonstrations that Jesus is alive 
winning nations in a moment by the power of his word backed up by authentic genuine superior spiritual power in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I've read a few books about the saints past and mighty men and women of God and I have seen God move through their lives in very mighty and spectacular ways not just in the area of healing but bringing genuine breakthrough genuine transformation whole families translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his son let me tell you the truth i have seen whole families saved non-christian families beginning from maybe someone in the family and then father mother sisters brothers we are not speaking from a standpoint of weakness we are speaking from a standpoint of higher levels of hunger for more that yesterday's anointing cannot suffice for today's challenges there needs to be a higher level and a higher dimension of God's grace there are nations today that were revival hubs but today they have become a historic monument sites where people go there to just feel bad and say God you once moved here there are nations and continents that if you wanted to see what God was doing you would have to travel to those regions today when you go there all you see are grave sites monuments that once upon a time God moved by this teaching the Spirit of God is hovering around the earth again one last time saying anyone who is available anyone doesn't matter what family you are coming from anyone who is available does not matter who knows you or who does not know you whether you are male or female anyone preacher I know you don't speak well but anyone anyone who thirsts he says in the third day that great day of the feast he said anyone who thirsts come let him come it's an invitation blessed be the man that God causes to approach him come For someone, God is calling you. You came to church tonight and God is saying, I'm extending an invitation. The dreams that you saw does not have to end as dreams. Apostle, I saw Smith Wigglesworth. That's not enough. Telling the world you saw him is not what they want. When Elisha carried the mantle of Elijah, the sons of the prophet said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. Saving nations in one day, bringing territories to the obedience of Christ in one day, in one moment, in one encounter. We don't have the time to go city by city again. The time is near. We don't have the time to go conference by conference again taking regions and taking nations by the power and the fire of Jesus hallelujah